Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, keltoncutlery.com. Okay, so today we're going to go over uh, a real quick how to sharpen an end mill. Or, or the, the end mill cutter that, you know, goes into your milling machine. So what we're, what I'm using this for is, you know, I've been making the, the slip joint pocket knives, right? Well, one thing that you're, you know, supposed to do for, uh, you know, nice slip joint pocket knives is uh, you relieve the inside of the liner right here by, you know, five to ten thousandths or so, so that when you open and close the knife, you don't get scratches across the ricasso. You just relieve that section and then, well, you're not supposed to get scratches across the ricasso. Um, I've had a couple of them that, that I've carried. You guys know I use my knives pretty hard. Um, that I relieve that area pretty good. And then, you know, invariably you get some sand or some dirt or whatever in there. And it ends up scratching your ricasso anyway. So I guess it does just kind of prolongs that, that pristine area right there in the, um, you know, in between the ricasso and the, uh, the pivot point. Anyway, so <clears throat> the way you do that is you take one of these, these end mill cutters and you chuck it up in your mill and you clamp the, the liner down to a rotary table and you bring this down, you touch off, you, you know, go down another five or ten thousandths, you crank the little wheel on that rotary table, it goes around, spins this thing, spins the liner around and then, you know, mills that section out. Well, <clears throat> My milling cutter, this is a half inch milling cutter, was getting pretty dull. Okay, it got dull a long time ago. Um, and I was gonna, you know, grab it, grab another one. I have a, a fresh one here. And then I'm pulling that thing out of there and I'm like, you know, you're only using the very little bitty end, I mean, just basically the four points on that end mill. You know, what about the rest of this? I mean, that's, it, it's kind of like a, a drill bit, you know? I mean, a drill bit, you're only using that little bitty cutting edge. You can sharpen them and sharpen them and sharpen them all the way down until the uh, the flutes get dull or until you break it, depends on whatever size. So I'm looking at that and I thought, huh, I should just, well, I wonder if I can just sharpen that like I do a drill bit. So I step over to the belt grinder, I had a 220 belt on there or something or other, and went ahead and try, uh, freehand sharpened it and uh, went and put it back on the mill and, you know, it cut considerably better than what it did before. So then I got thinking, and uh, I thought, well, how does everybody else sharpen these things? So I get on YouTube, and um, man, there's, there's guys chucking them up in lathes with uh, indexing heads, you know, and tool post grinders. Uh, guys that had really fancy, um, you know, like production equipment, you know, to be able to grind the, the flutes or the, uh, the cutting edges on these to a precise angle. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking at that, and I'm like, hey, this is about the only thing I do on that milling machine. And I really don't think it needs to be that super precise. Um, there's got to be an easier way. So I kept going <coughs> and come to find this guy's book right here, uh, Harold Hall. Uh, I guess he's got several other books on here. In fact, I might even have a couple of them. Um, and in here, he has got a pretty cool... little setup for uh, a really nice table to go on a hard wheel grinder and then a uh, basically that milling cutter holder and then a, uh, a guide that he's got screwed into his table um, and that's how you end up sharpening the milling bit. Um, so there's a, a couple of fellows on YouTube that have got a little bit better videos on this than what are the pictures are in that book. So pretty much um, I went ahead and fabbed up my own little setup on this thing and boy it works slick. I mean really slick. It took me, uh, well I don't know, yesterday was the 4th and so I played on with it yesterday but didn't work a whole lot. Worked on a little bit on Monday and then had the ideas bouncing in my head over the weekend. So however long that took. But anyway, um, what it consists of is, here's a holder, okay? This is just a chunk of one inch uh, mild steel bar stock. Uh, so one inch by one inch. I chucked it up in the lathe in a four jaw and centered it up best I could within, oh, probably five thousandths or so. And then um, uh, bored a half inch hole through the center of it. 
Um, I didn't go all the way through. That way the, the cutter, you know, bottoms out and it can't slip all the way through. And then drilled and tapped two, two holes in the side and then um, cut off. I just made some quick set screws out of uh, whatever, whatever it had handy. So anyway, so what you do here is you take your milling cutter. Now I did make this a little bit on the tight side. Um, so you got to use the, the scrap of leather. You bottom it out. Okay. Then what you do is you line up you line up your flutes to where they are and I'm going to have to grab that scrap of leather again. Line up your, your cutting edges to where they are at 90 degrees um, you know, to the bar stock. So let me do that right quick. This is, I guess, guided uh, somewhat precision going on here, right? So here we go. So now these, these flutes here are going straight across at a 90 degrees to, you know, this. Or that cutting edge is parallel to the top of here. So then we set, tighten up our set screws, our little grub screws. And now we have a way to index that cutting edge sitting on a, uh, a grinding rest. So now we'll go ahead and go over to the, the grinder. Um. set up like a hard wheel grinder. Usually I take these things and use them as buffing machines or run a wire wheel or something like that. If I want to do any grinding, you know, I've got the belt grinders. But for this application, that curved wheel um, apparently, um, you know, gets your angle a little bit easier. Now, so for these work rests, all I did was I had a piece of this, it's probably like three inch C channel. Um, and I just, uh, drilled a hole in the side of it so that the the factory um you know so it slips over the factory work rest and gives me a little bit more room to work here this jobber right here we'll take it off here in a second so you can take a look at it a little bit closer all it is is another piece of that one inch by one inch uh, mild steel bar stock with a hole drilled in the end of it and tapped for a uh, set screw that's got kind of a, a a large flat head on the end of it and pretty much what you do here is now that we can index this four flute mill, mill bit on four sides, you clamp it, or this part right here, uh, I just clamped it up right quick because, uh, well, I just don't really see uh, any need to, you know, make, make it kind of cool or nice and everything. So anyway, so... Part of the, the problem with sharpening these freehand is getting all of them to the same length. That's where this screw comes in handy. With that screw, this, this part, the tool holder butts into that, that screw head. Okay, so since it butts into that screw head, it, it bottoms out there. So you can't run the bit into the grinding wheel more than where you have that screw set. So if you, you need to, to grind more off, why well, then you just back out that screw a little bit and now, you know, like a quarter of a turn, and now you can grind in a little bit farther. That's your stop so that you get all four of your points ground to the same depth. <clears throat> now this, uh, this holder here also is a, a, an angle guide. So I don't know if you can. is not set at, you know, straight in. It's supposed to be off about two degrees or so. So what I did was I just eyeballed it and got to where, you know, tried to match up the geometry of uh, that fresh milling cutter or milling bit um, and just kind of matched it up a little bit. Now, uh, oh, when I sharpened this last time, I must not have had this bottomed out. So anyway, so now you can kind of see how that goes in. It gets sharpened. 
you rotate it, comes in, gets sharpened, and you keep going until you get all four of them and the grinder just, you know, was able to take some material off of each tooth and bottom out. That is what um, makes them all equal. Now, um, so the, the cutting geometry on a fresh one, I'm going to go grab that. So the cutting geometry on a fresh one, you can see you've got two different grinds here. You've got this, your primary grind, or secondary, depends on how you look at it. But the grind that actually does the cutting is at about this kind of angle. And then you've got a relief grind coming in at this angle. Now, what I'm cutting with this cutter is micarta, brass, soft stainless steel, nickel silver, you know, very soft stuff. So um, I'm just going to keep, uh, you know, messing around with this angle until I find one that gives me a good surface finish on the majority of the materials that I cut. I don't think it has to be near as thick as this since I'm cutting such soft material. If you were grinding this and sharpening it to be cut cutting um, you know a lot of steel or something then you might want to go ahead and duplicate the factory angle um, to get so as you sharpen these flats down or your cutting edges down sooner or later this center part will it'll be high and you know it doesn't get ground down with every, sharp, every sharpening so sooner or later you're going to have to relieve that what I did to do this one was I loosened up the set screws and then line the points up with the corners. So instead of this line being parallel to this line, this line was, you know, corner to corner here. And then I put the whole thing side here on the coarser wheel and then just ground, um, you know, four four hash marks into there and that ground down the center well enough. The cool thing about this <coughs> is that it's very, very fast, okay? Um, so far, this work rest on here. So I'll just undo this and that can go sit in my, uh, you know, this whole setup can go sit in my toolbox over by my lathe <coughs> or the one by the milling machine. <clears throat> and then when I need it, heck, I just come over here, put it down, kind of eyeball it to the angle that I've got, clamp the thing down, put this up against it, and away I go. Um, this right here, like I said, all this is is a piece of, of one-inch stock that's got a screw going into it. And then I just quickly cut a, a flat in the top. But see how it's got a nice... Um, you know, nice wide head on that screw or bolt so that that can butt up against it. So anyway, so this is, uh, this is pretty cool for me. Um, pretty dang cool because, you know, I mean, I hate throwing away, you know, like a drill bit. Because it's dull. I mean, yeah, you can break off the bit and then use the shank as a, a you know, hardened, um, you know, pin stock. Uh, but there's no sense in throwing away a, a perfectly good cutter just because the end of it's dull. Um, you know, a, a simple setup like this will, you know, bring that thing right back. And then, like I said, with this cutter right here, I'm cutting soft materials. So I should be able to run a much uh, narrower edge angle to where it cuts with less force um, and then kind of mess around with uh, the grinding wheel finish um, and uh, you know and the angle to get myself a cut that I don't have to hand sand because when you cut these things you know what I have been doing with these is you go ahead and you mill that out and then you come back in with a little piece of sandpaper wrapped around a popsicle stick and freaking sand all those marks out and that, uh, you know, it takes two or three minutes to, to make the cut. And then you take 15, 20 minutes sanding all them marks out. Well, 
if you can you know change the angle on your cutter and keep it really nice and sharp to where you don't have to do that sanding then you know that's 15 minutes per uh, liner that you don't have to spend um, you know so that you can concentrate on other embellishments on the knife like this one right here it's smooth enough I won't hand sand that um, it could be a little bit better uh, and I might come back in and touch up that one little corner right there, but the rest of it, as far as I'm concerned, looks really nice. The Macarta ones, there is absolutely no reason uh, to hand sand that. I mean, it's, it's dang near perfect just the way it is. And so that's a huge time saver. So anyway, so, um, uh, yeah, so Howard Hall, or Harold Hall, uh, and in this book, he's got uh, how to sharpen other stuff. I mean, drill bits and different dovetail cutters and lathe tools and, and all kind of stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to spend a whole lot more time on this. Um, but to get the, the milling bits sharpened up, um, it's working really good so far. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. Visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.